Hello and welcome to this AQA A-level topic video, this one looking at the holism and reductionism debate. Now the purpose of this short topic video is to really get our heads around the different key terms within the holism and reductionism debate. And you'll see on screen now at the top there are a number of key terms that are actually named in the specification that you need to be particularly aware of for this part of the course. Now those include reductionism, biological and environmental reductionism, levels of explanation and holism. Okay. And the purpose of this debate focuses on a really important question in, in psychology, and that's can complex behaviours be reduced down to more simple parts? So that's the whole purpose of the debate itself. Now if we start with the term reductionism, reductionism is the belief that human behaviour can be explained by breaking it down into more simple component parts. Now those people who take a reductionist position believe that the best way to understand behaviour is to look closely at the parts that make up our different systems, whether it's biological or psychological, and then choose the most simple explanation to understand how our behaviour works. Okay? So the reductionist approach actually argues that there are different levels of explanation, and levels of explanation is one of your other key terms, and at the lowest level we might consider physiological or biological factors, things like neurochemicals, genetics, brain structure, hormones and so forth. Okay. At the middle level we might consider psychological explanations, whether it's cognitive or behavioural explanations. And right at the top, the highest level, we might consider social and cultural explanations, where we try and explain behaviour in terms of the influence of social groups on an individual. Okay. Now those actually have names, so we can refer to those as the lowest level, the middle level and the highest level. But it's still very, very abstract at this stage. And the best way really to consider these levels is to illustrate it with an example. Now I'm actually going to start at the bottom and work our way up. So if we take memory as an example, memory can be considered in terms of biological components. Okay? For example, you may have come across a study by Maguire who found an association between the size of the hippocampus and memory for spatial navigation in taxi drivers. Now, what Maguire has done is biologically reduced down the explanation of memory to just one biological factor, in this case, the size of the hippocampus. Okay? So that would be a biological reductionist point of view. Okay? However, we could also consider memory at a psychological level. Okay? Uh, and many psychologists actually do this. So cognitive psychologists in particular examine different aspects of memory. Miller looked at the capacity of short-term memory. Peterson and Peterson examined the duration of short-term memory. And these would all be sort of psychological explanations to understanding how our memory works. And right at the top, we could consider explaining memory in terms of both social and cultural factors. And there is research that actually argues that cultural expe expectations affect both what we remember and how we recall information. And you may have come across the really famous study by Bartlett who looked at schema theory and how actually cultural expectations shape what we remember. Okay, So it's nice to just consider those different levels in terms of a, a year one example. Okay. On top of that, what you also need to be aware of are two key terms within the reductionism debate. Okay, The first one is biological reductionism, which is very specific. And this refers to the way that biological psychologists try to reduce behaviour to a physical level and explain it in terms of neurons, neurotransmitters, hormones, brain structure, etc. So you need to know that key term. The other one you need to be aware of is what's called environmental reductionism, which is sometimes called stimulus and response reductionism. And this is where behavioural psychologists argue that behaviour can be reduced down to simple building blocks of stimulus and response associations. And actually even more complex behaviour is just a series of stimulus and response associations. Okay? So you need to be aware of those two key terms. Again, I think it's always really, really useful to consider these within the context of an example. So if we think about biological reductionism, Taking a different example now, if we think to a year one psychopathology topic, the biological approach argues that OCD is caused by higher levels of dopamine, low levels of serotonin. That's two of the biological explanations. So that would be a biologically reductionist point of view. Sticking with the same topic, if we think about environmental reductionism, uh, the behaviourist approach actually argues that phobias are caused by classical conditioning and maintained through operant conditioning. Okay? So you can see how that will be an example of environmental reductionism. Okay? So there we have it. We've got our reductionism. We've got the two key terms that we need, biological reductionism and environmental reductionism. Of course, at the opposite end of the spectrum, what sits probably nicely above all of that is the idea of holism. And holism comes from the Greek word holos, which actually means all, whole, entire, entirety. And that gives you really the idea of what, what this key term is about. And it's the idea that human behaviour 
should be viewed as a whole integrated experience and not as separate component parts okay so it's very very distinct it's saying that we shouldn't consider different levels of explanation we should actually consider the whole behavior as a whole experience for humans okay again i think it's really really useful to have examples and i'm going to give you one novel example and an example you'll be more familiar with from your course uh, there was a movement of psychology, guest out psychology, in around 1910, 1912, which was a, a group of German psychologists who took a holistic position to perception. And they said that when we see something in the real world, we do so as a whole rather than as a collection of bits and pieces. OK, um, and actually, since then, cognitive psychologists have also taken a slightly holistic approach in the area of study of perception. So if you think about visual illusions like the one on the screen now, if you examine that image, what you will instantly perceive, or most people perceive, is the outline of a cube. However, there is in fact no cube in that image, and your mind has created the cube due to the position and the configuration of all of the black shapes on the image. Okay, So what you've done is you've taken a very holistic view to looking at that image. Your mind has interpreted that there is a cube there when actually there is in fact not. And guessed out psychology was really the starting point of looking at perception using a holistic point of view. So that's a nice example. An example that you'll be more familiar with, though, because you study this within your year two approaches topic is the humanistic psychology. And humanistic psychologists argue that humans react to stimuli as an organised whole and not as a set of stimulus and response links. So they're very against the environmental reductionism point of view. As an approach, humanists really take a qualitative approach to investigate an individual uh, and really look at the interactions of people within society. So it's a very, very different approach, okay? And does take, again, a holistic point of view. So there you can see it, there we have it. All the definitions are now on screen. So you've got your reductionism at the bottom, the belief that human behavior can be explained by breaking it down into simpler parts. There are three different levels of reductionism. At the bottom, you've got biological explanations. In the middle, psychological. And at the top, you've got social and cultural explanations. And do think back to that memory example we shared with you. You need to be aware of the distinction between biological reductionism, which is our lowest level, where behaviour is reduced to a physical level and explained in terms of things like neurons, neurotransmitters, hormones, brain structure. And you also need to be aware of environmental reductionism, which is also known as stimulus response reductionism, where we reduce behaviour down to the stimulus response links, OK? Of course, at the top end of the spectrum, the other end of the spectrum, you've got this idea of holism, the idea that human behaviour should be viewed as a whole integrated experience and not as separate parts. Now, on the screen there, you've got all of the key terms that you need to be aware of for the exam. There are others out there that are really, really useful to be aware of, but I'm not going to cover them in this video. So you've got the idea of experimental reductionism uh, that can be used in there and an interactionist approach. They're nice terms to have, absolutely, but these are the key ones that you need. Now, I hope you found that useful. Don't forget that we have our live webinars that you can sign up to by going on to tutortu.net forward slash psychology forward slash events. If you've got any questions following this particular topic video, do ask them either in the YouTube channel or, or send us a message directly on Twitter. If you're not already a part of our student Facebook community group, do search for it, A-Level Psychology Student Group. And then if you've got any other questions, always feel free to ask me. Thanks once again, and I hope you found that useful.